It seems like no matter where you go or what you do, in today's day and age, there is some level of content that you need to be producing in order to breathe, let alone succeed as a business owner. Everybody has a personal brand. Everybody creates content for their company. Everybody documents this and documents that. The era of you know privatized life and just kind of doing things old school behind the behind the backyard or behind the school is is, is just kind of over right um now that's not to say it can't be done obviously like you can build a business without content any day there are tons of businesses that don't create any content whatsoever and make millions upon millions upon millions of dollars in revenue um that being said creating content is obviously a massive advantage and many people are trying to take advantage of that but um, the thing is with content is it's it's kind of tricky to get down right I've managed to grow my Instagram account to over a hundred thousand followers um, I a lot of that was just kind of in the span of like a three to six month period which is usually how most people have it happen but the second most important thing is actually you know staying consistent with it after that initial spurt of growth and then monetizing that content as well um, now when it comes to content creation there's usually a few big caveats right and i'm going to go over those in this video but what i really wanted to cover in this video was my content ideation system right so make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because i'm going to be giving you guys some free gifts this bad boy where is it <clears throat> This bad boy is going to be revealed at the end of the video, but I just kind of wanted to break down content um, and you know show you how you can potentially systemize it a little bit as well. This is a bit of a work in progress for me currently, but I really wanted to show it to you guys because I think it's pretty cool. So when it comes to content, there are four pillars of you know content creation is what I like to call it. There's ideation, curation, SEO, and reporting. So what are all of these things? SEO is obviously, you know, kind of that, that final part of the content creation process. If you're creating a YouTube video, for example, like this one, it's going to consist of, you know, finding the right hashtags or oh, finding the right hashtags, finding the right tags, you know, to rank your video, finding an SEO optimized title that's less than 50 characters, that's readable, it's everything with a thumbnail to optimize for click-through rate, basically everything that comes at the end of the content creation process. Um, the reporting is basically just your feedback. All right, so how did this video do? You know, what is performance? look like that stuff is pretty easy a lot of that stuff can be automated outsourced um, for relatively cheap as well now the two most important parts debatably of content creation are the ideation and the curation ideation that's basically you know finding proven ideas within your niche that's pretty straightforward pretty simple um, the curation is the actual creation of the content you're filming it you're writing the copy today we're going to be focusing mostly on the copy side of things um, and we'll, we'll focus on curation more in another video as well i want to mainly focus on ideation today but the big problem with both of these is that they're very time consuming whether or they're very costly i guess whether it's you know because they're time consuming or it's because you have to outsource to somebody else and that's expensive um, now i'll kind of go a little bit more in depth Usually when somebody wants to create content, they have a few different options, right? They either do it themselves, which requires a crap ton of time to be poured into uh, the actual ideation process. They might hop on Instagram, you know, scroll around, try to find some videos on there um, that they can take inspiration from. They might do some research on the internet and they end up spending hours upon hours upon hours for like 12 content ideas, right? There's also a bit of a learning curve. There are tools that you can use, but you do kind of have to have a knack for identifying quality content ideas. You know, if a, if someone's making a video on e-commerce, for example, you can make a video on, you know, <laughs> why drop shipping isn't dead. Like that's, yeah, that's a solid topic. Um, and then you might come across another video that's like breaking down uh, Calavio performance metrics that you need to scale your e-commerce business. It's like one's going to do really well B2B um, and then one of them's going to do really well B2C. But somebody who's not experienced with content creation is not really going to know the difference, right? Then you have inconsistency. So it's like you're kind of all over the place. You have, you know, burnout, obviously, that's kind of like it takes a lot of time and you have other stuff to do. So you just kind of put more on your plate than you need to. And because you're trying to get things done fast, you usually just kind of settle for less. You're late to trends. It's super hard to identify. You don't have all day to be scrolling on social media. You are a business owner. You are a CEO or C-suite executive or employee. It doesn't really matter, but you don't have time to be scrolling and looking for trends, right? You can outsource that to somebody, but that's expensive. We'll cover that in a second. Then you also have procrastination. Okay, fine. I'm so tired of doing this. You know, I'm settling for less. 
and I'm constantly missing out on things. Like I don't even really feel like doing this anymore. Let me just kind of put it off. Then you have the opportunity cost. Obviously, if you're a business owner or you're trying to grow a business, um, <laughs> your time's gonna be much better spent elsewhere instead of surfing the internet for content ideas. As important as content is, that's like kind of the, the caveat here. So that brings you to option B, which is outsourcing that, that function, right? But then you have a content agency that charges you $1,500 a month for ideation, or just like, you know, 28 short form scripts or whatever the case might be, right? Um, it's expensive to outsource. You can have a VA do it, but the quality is gonna be much lower, um, which again, goes into <laughs> the inconsistent quality aspect of things. Then you also have to communicate back and forth with somebody and it's kind of all over the place. Now this, this goes hand in hand with the curation aspect as well. I don't want you guys to think that this is all just for ideation. Like, you know, obviously the curation is where it's gonna get most expensive when it comes to like outsourcing with monthly retainers and everything like that. Uh, but you're also just kind of giving control of the entire marketing aspect of your brand to somebody else, right? And it's, to me, I think it's important to understand how those things work. Um, just so once you get to a point where it's like, yeah, I'm confident I could do this myself if I didn't have anybody, um, then you can maybe look at outsourcing it. But I wanna present a different option today. Option C, which is going to be our automated system. I'm gonna walk you guys through my current automated system. So mainly consists of four different steps, right? And I'll show you guys kind of what I have set up in just a second as well. Um, so step one is the RSS feed. Now, if you don't know what an RSS feed it's, is, it's super simple. So you can actually head to this website called rss.app. And let's just say, you know, you're creating fitness content. Somebody you might take inspiration from, could be somebody like, you know, Greg O'Gallagher, Kino Body, could be, um, I'm about to throw another Greg name out there, like Greg Doucette, Will Tennyson. Like, let's just say you're, you know, creating fitness content and those are people you want to take inspiration from. You can actually see every single person that I have added to my feed right here. What's pretty cool about this website is you can, basically, you can sign up for a free trial or something like that, not a huge deal. But you have these feeds right here, right? Now you can go ahead and click on new feed. Let's just say you wanted to do fitness. Like you didn't have any specific, you know, page you wanted to follow. You just wanted fitness in general. So you can actually head over here and you can select fitness as a topic and it will curate a list of news sources, articles, a bunch of places that regularly post about you know, fitness content and that stuff will all be delivered right to you. Um, and I'll show you kind of like what I mean by that in just a second. And it's the same thing if you wanted to go ahead and create a feed with somebody like again, Will Tennyson, you can just say, I wanna create an Instagram feed, right? You wanna watch every single reel that he uploads. So that way, whenever you're ideating, you don't have to hop over to Instagram in order to, you know, like actually try to search and search and search and try to find these ideas. Now, what's cool about these RSS feeds as well is that you can set them into bundles. So you'll see it here, I have my main bundle right here, which is the one I usually get my content ideas from. And once this bundle is all put together, so you can see this is all like AI content, general business content, everything like that. Um, these are all great content ideas. Like these are all awesome things that I would like to post about. Um, but where the automation aspect comes into things is this right here. So you'll see I have this bundle URL. Now where this comes into play is inside of this automation right here. So this isn't, <laughs> This is something that's still kind of a work in progress, but it's, it's been an absolute lifesaver for me. Um, essentially, anytime somebody posts, let's just say, you know, Hormozy posts or something like that, it'll come through this, this, this filter here. And if it's something from a news article, it'll take a certain path. If it's an Instagram post, it'll take a certain path. If it's a YouTube post or Twitter post, it'll take a certain path. Um, but what I wanna focus on today is the Instagram path. So if the URL contains Instagram, basically what's going to happen is it's going to discern whether or not that's an image post or a video post. If it's an image post, it's going to go ahead and grab that image and then just you know generate 10 different content ideas for me based on that image. Now the video post is where it gets a little bit more complex because when it comes to ideation with AI, and this is the second part of everything by the way, so it's like the actual, um, you know, refining of the, the content idea. So this is step two, which is squeezing the juice, right? So we're taking this Instagram file, we're converting it to an MP3 file, and then we're transcribing it using OpenAI's Whisper. The reason for this is because the context is very important when it comes to generating quality content ideas with AI. Obviously, if you have, you know, this video by Alex Hormozzi and all it says is sell something people never stop buying or add on people who never stop selling for you. It's like, 
maybe you can create some content ideas off of that, but wouldn't it be nice to have the actual context of the entirety of the video, like the entire video transcript to go off of? Um, so that's kind of the whole purpose of the transcription aspect of things. Same thing with the image stuff, uh, but that's still a work in progress. This is the part that I actually have done. <laughs> um, so it's going to go ahead and transcribe that audio, and then it's going to take the transcription, the title of the video, the caption of the video, and it's going to generate 10 content ideas that are directly correlated and related to my niche and the style of content that I create, right? You can see here that it extracts all of that, runs it through some custom code, and then adds it to this Airtable base. Let me hop into my interfaces here. You'll see here that I have my ideation wiki, right? So anytime a new content idea comes through, it'll be added right here to this RSS feed. So you can see here, like, um, you know, this guy posted right there. You can see here all of these different like videos. This is a, a news article or whatever. Um, so it's like, then I have all of these ideas that I can choose from. Um, so it's like, for example, t -t 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 bias and fairness issues and AI algorithms. Like, eh, I'm not really super big on that idea. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Um, like this one's pretty solid, okay, decent. I might wanna add that to my topics, right? So I can then click add to topics and it's going to add it to my 1B topics interface over here. Now, what I can do from here is I can create short text posts, I can create long text posts, so like newsletters, threads, I can create short form video scripts, and I can create long form video outlines, just like this one. So it's, it's a really systemized way of taking a piece of content and a topic from just kind of basic, okay, this person posted it, all the way to, okay, this is a you know solid content idea, and I don't even have to really think too much about the content creation aspect of things. Um, I can just let my custom models do it for me. Like, let me go to my Twitter here real fast. <clears throat> I'll show you guys some of these tweets. So this one was written by me. Um, this one was written by me as well. This one was actually written by the AI model, right? This one was written by the AI model. Obviously I filmed the video, but the video is also AI. <laughs> so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cracked. Um, and then this is also written by AI. This is written by AI. This is written by AI. Uh, now my, my engagement isn't great and that's just because my Twitter is not the best, but um, you get kind of the, the idea, right? So once we have the video transcript and the video topic, we're gonna add information about our offer to actually generate the ideas. I like using Claude for this just because I find that it's a little bit better than ChatGPT. Um, I think everybody can pretty much agree that Claude when it comes to uh, creative stuff like copywriting, uh, ideation is, is just much better than ChatGPT. If they had fine tuning, oh man, it'd be so over. I know you can fine tune uh, Claude Haiku, I think, using Amazon Web Services, but I don't know about Opus. Um, then you have the, you know, AI generates the 10 video ideas and they're tailored using my specific offer and they're added to this little base here. From here, just as I show you guys, you can access the customized dashboard. You can select ideas that you personally like. Um, and then from there, you can add them to your content Kanban, right? So you have these, these viral ideas that are constantly coming to you. And this allows you to, A, save a shit ton of time because you're not constantly having to go out there and search and search and search and search for ideas. They just come to you. They're coming to you, baby, right? Then you also have relevant content. So these ideas are all new. Like these are all new things that are happening. This is especially for important for me, somebody who has to keep up with like AI news and just kind of like the latest developments with AI. Um, this is very, very good for me because it's all coming directly to me, right? Then you have a little bit of a competitive edge. Obviously, you know, you have the increased amount of time that you're not spending on the ideation process. You have more money in your pocket because you don't have to pay someone to go out and do it. Um, and then you also just have like quality content ideas, right? It's consistent. You can wake up every single day and have 20 new ideas on your desk, right? And then also the, the content is engaging as long as you, you know, stick to consistent principles when it comes to actually creating content um, and you choose ideas that actually make sense. So that's really the whole reason I, I've systemized my, my content ideation process. Um, now, I know I mentioned at the beginning of this video that you guys would be getting something for free out of this video. So I wanted to go over that real quick with you. You're gonna be opening this little mystery box here. So what exactly is inside? Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this black box, all right. <laughs> I was gonna do some kind of like hype thing, but 
First and foremost, I'm gonna give you guys a templated version of this base. Now it's just going to be our ideation interface. So it's gonna consist of the wiki, um, a spot for you to put your RSS feed items, um, a topics interface as well. It's not gonna have these buttons to, you know, obviously like generate everything, but you guys will be able to go through these content ideas. That's in another video. The creation is in another video. Then you have this creator analysis interface. You can see I've got one of my clients right there, Cole. Um, he creates phenomenal content and you can just kind of make note of different creators or uh, competitors that you want to take inspiration from when it comes to creating content, right? So you're going to get this, this interface completely for free. All you have to do is click two buttons, copy, paste. Um, it's super, super easy, actually. And then I'm going to be giving you guys a basic make.com ideation um, automation as well. Now, this one will have the capability to, you know, download things from Instagram. I'll kind of put it all in a very in-depth guide because it is a little bit technically complex. For those of you who aren't as technically sound and just kind of want some ideas to go to a spreadsheet or something like that, that's going to be an option for you too. If you just like to keep it simple, like, hey, I just want, you know, whenever somebody posts, I just want it added to a spreadsheet and I can take a look at it later. Cool. That's perfectly fine. You know, that will be a possibility as well. And then finally, I'm going to be giving you guys my prompt template for the actual ideation aspect of things. Um, and it will be directly integrated into the automation for you guys to use as well. So that being said, I'm going to be giving you guys a free step-by-step -step guide for implementing all of this. All you have to do is click the button in the button, I say. All you have to do is click the link in the description or in the first pinned comment below and you'll get it completely for free. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but I probably will ask you to opt in because it's kind of kind of valuable I guess <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but um, yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed this if you want more content like this be sure to let me know down below um, and I'll create more Miro boards uh, more Miro board type videos but um, otherwise you know guys just just subscribe with it's no pressure really it's no pressure whatsoever um, but that being said guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video subscribe for more content down below and I'll see you guys later peace